Alright, so I'm about to head outside and start working on the Eclipse. Everything that I've done with the wiring harness and the mega support itself has to come out of the car. Well, it doesn't have to, but it's going to be coming out of the car. I just made a live stream earlier today explaining the whole situation. So if you want to see it, look for live stream titled Mega Squirt slash Eclipse updates. Probably going to have to send a Mega Squirt in to get a coil transistor replaced on it. While I'm trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to be doing, whether I'm going to be sending the ECU back into DIY Auto Tune to get repaired, or if I'll be able to repair it myself. I'm going to go and pull my wiring harness out and I'm also going to go in and start removing a whole bunch of extra stuff that's still lingering in the engine bay from the old wiring harness or there's stuff like my cruise control is still in there that doesn't work, things like that. I'm going to start pulling all those at, out of it. I'm going to remove at least the top half of my intake manifold so I can reach everything super easy because the intake manifold gets in the way of everything. Alright, so I'm out of the garage. First thing I'm going to start by doing is just getting this catch can out of the way. I've already got my intake out of the way and I started while I was troubleshooting the ignition issues. I started peeling some of these wires up. So I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way and then start undoing some of the tape that is holding bits and pieces of the harness together. Get that all out and then I'll come up here and undo the little few things that are holding the main mega squirt harness in. I'll go in the car, undo all the zip ties and start pulling that harness out. Alright, I got the main harness back out. Here it is. I went and retucked my ignition wire back into it. I went and I've chopped everything off in here and got stuff kind of cleaned up. Got all my plastic for the most part out of the way or everything that needed to come out is out and free and visible. Now what I'm going to do is probably just feed the mega squirt harness back in try to tuck it through the center console like i mentioned and run it up inside of everything to keep everything out of the floor the harness won't get in the way of the seat over here which will be a lot nicer and the other thing i'm going to do i'm going to take these ground wires that run into the mega squirt which originally come all the way out the end of the harness and I'm going to feed them through all the way back out of the harness and I'm going to ground them directly inside of the interior somewhere. I was trying to find bolts that already exist to use and I was considering potentially using one of these bolts right here. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to get the harness back in after I get those ground wires pulled out to feed everything through potentially right now. Although I think I might, before I do that, start, I might go pull the intake manifold off and get back here to this harness right here. Day number two, I pretty much got done just with the wiring harness yesterday. But I do have the wire harness ran all the way through, so I'll show you guys that real quick. So here it is, out in the engine bay. As you, as you can see, I have uh, quite a bit more wire sticking out than I did before, because before the harness ran along here, and right here where my hand is at is about where the wire stopped, whereas now I have probably another foot, foot and a half of wire to reach stuff with, and I don't have the wire harness running up here, so this whole area up here is a lot cleaner, and it looks a lot better inside the car as well. There is the harnesses and everything. I have the ground wires is this harness right there. Those are the ones that I said I was going to pull all the way out of the harness and then run all the way back here, which I've done. That's five less wires in the engine bay. That's one less ring terminal grounded in the engine bay. Just a lot cleaner and there's no use having them run all the way up there when all they are is a ground. Vacuum line right there. The plug I got all put back together, taped up. And then this is the DB15, which has the one wire for my other coil drive. The wires run underneath the center console. Worked out pretty well. They're kind of tight, but it fit down there just fine. There's not that many wires in it anymore anyway. It runs up through where the stock, like, I don't know what harness that is in there. If it's like a security thing or something else. But there's a harness that, if I can get the seat out of the way here, runs through there. And you can see, runs right along the back of my shifter pretty decent spot for it it can't hit anything and then from there i got it in this little tie that used to be it's right there it used to be for another harness that was here for the uh there used to be like a stock amplifier or something and i used that to mount it and it just runs all the way up there and uh, carries on all the way into the engine bay through the hole where the shifter cables are and it cleans this whole area up a lot looks like it's meant to be a lot cleaner a lot safer less likely to get stepped on, kicked, yanked. I have a new valve cover for this car. I don't think I've showed you guys yet. 
I went and bought one at the junkyard, painted it red, cleaned it up real nice, putting that on the car because this one's all chipped up and it's all gross and it's got like the junkyard writing and stuff all over and I just hate it. So I'm going to be putting a nice bright red one. I think it'll clean the bay up and without wires running over, that's the reason I waited so long was because I didn't want to put a new valve cover on and then have wires hiding it. Alright, I got the intake manifold off. It's sitting right here. Pretty easy to remove. There was five bolts that had 10 mil heads. And then there's this metal bracket that went up front, bolted right here, and then to the lower part. I don't know why it's there. Probably not going to put it back on. And now I have much better access to everything that's all here. Now I can get to my main harness and all of these wires that run to it and stuff and start plucking things out of it that I don't need. I can get rid of the stupid cruise control bracket, which is super ugly and just gets in the way of everything over here. And once that's out of the way, I'll kind of figure out what else I want to do. I can also get to my heater core. There's the fitting that's smashed on the heater core. I'm sorry, the camera sideways. I may try and pop that thing back open and see if I can get heat back. All right, what's up, everybody? It is day number three of this whole thing. I basically did uh, what I said I was going to do yesterday, and then uh, went to bed and continue filming yesterday. I'm back again, just got done doing a few extra things to the car. So first thing I said I was going to do was remove, I believe I mentioned, the cruise control box. Totally gone. Not here. Ripped it out. Don't have this cable here. Don't have the box here. All that stuff. Gone. Also removed all of the EVAP junk from the car. The fresh air canister and all that little crap that used to be inside of here is all completely gone. So, so clean in there. There's the little overflow hose from my radiator overflow. And right here, notice how clean this whole area is. There's no more lines coming up here. And there's no more lines down in here. There's no more lines here running along and over to the rack where there's just two open holes at the moment. Right there. So once I get this car driving, I'm going to keep an eye on that and see if fluid ends up coming out of it. If no fluid comes out of it, I guess I can just leave it open. It's not likely to get a lot of moisture in it or anything like that. And I got the heater core things opened up, so hopefully... I can get heat hooked up. They're not perfect, but I think I'll be able to hose clamp coolant hoses down and be able to have heat in this car again. It's more than having a defogger or like a defroster for when it's steamy or raining like it is right now when the windows steam up. So I'll be able to do that again, which will be nice. All right, well, I ended up getting the coolant hoses totally attached. Here they are. This one's going to sit up here. And I've got this plastic right here because this is probably going to bounce off of this lift point. And I got it back here because the hoses might rub on like the intake manifold and stuff. Now that that's done and I got all the clamps and stuff on the hoses and everything, those are a pain to reach even with everything out of the way. But it's done. So now I'm going to go in and clean up some of that wiring harness that runs back there. Since the coolant hoses are attached i may even get the intake manifold put back on we'll see how far i feel like getting but i do want to get that wiring harness sort of cleaned up i'm gonna go get started on that wiring harness stuff and i'll get back with you guys in just a little bit all right i don't even know what day it is anymore but i really don't also don't really remember where I left off last, so I'll just show you what I did. Just shipped out the ECU today, packaged it up, put shipping label on it, dropped it off. So it is out. And it said the estimated delivery was Saturday. So if it gets to DIY Auto Tune on Saturday, they do their thing. It'll take, if it takes a day or two, and they ship it out, I should have it back by next weekend, and I can get this car running and driving again. So that's all good. And everything else that I did, I just kind of freed this harness up, cut the wires back a little bit. I'll go ahead and start taping it up. I had no tape, so I couldn't finish taping it up. That's where I'm at. Didn't really do much more. Got heat hooked up. Super excited to have that again. Like I said before, not having any way to defog your windows when it's raining or humid out or in the morning, or even if it's just cold outside, really, really blows cock, especially on a windshield that's already hard enough to see out of. I don't have anything else to get from behind here, so I can go put the intake mani back on. I'll show you guys what everything in the engine bay looks like all put back together, all cleaned up, all the useless junk removed. It is now Saturday. I started this whole process on Monday and the entire car is now finished. I basically just buckled down and finished the entire thing. All that was left yesterday, didn't film any of it, didn't do anything uh, 
video wise with it just so I can get it totally done and show you guys the final result and show you guys everything in its pretty much finished state. I did end up replacing one thing that I didn't mention which was the thermostat. Uh, you guys can't see it. Let's go out where uh, there's some better lighting. I'm not going to let you guys see the engine bay yet. So here's the old thermostat and the car would take forever to warm up and it would never fully warm up and when I was driving down the road and there's wind going through the radiator it would cool all the way down to about 110, 120 which is not good. So uh, I figured first thing I would check before I started trying to block the radiator off or anything or putting like plastic in the bumper to cover like where airflow is getting to the radiator, I figured I would check the thermostat and make sure that it is functioning properly. And as you can see here, the thermostat is stuck open permanently, like stuck, it, and it's bent as well. And I don't know what's going on here, how that happened. It might just be old and worn out, or somebody may have done this to it. I don't know, but that obviously right there was not ideal replace that that should have fixed the issue if it didn't i'm gonna end up making some sort of plastic cover to like put up in the mouth of the bumper here so that there isn't as much direct airflow just running straight into the radiator as you know obviously right now with no ac condenser no plastic shrouds nothing up in front of the radiator to control and block any excess air from getting through it and i like the idea of having maximum airflow to it in case i do ever need it show you guys the finished result here it is this is everything completely put back together the power steering lines are gone I do not have it blocked off down there because I don't have the one bolt to block the other one off and I'll just see if it leaks all of the evap stuff is gone I don't think I showed you guys that the canister and everything's gone all of the lines are totally eliminated here and I've got a plug red plug right down there on the line that comes from the fuel tank so all of that crap that used to sit behind the bumper, totally gone. All that's there is the hose from the overflow container, and that's it. So the car is officially an all-delete car, basically. No air conditioning, no power steering, no EVAP, no EGR, none of that stuff, no cats, anything like that. Got my bright red valve cover on here. I don't know if I showed you guys this or not, but the valve cover is on. I ended up using stock bolts in the middle and then two in the back just because these are just normal bolts figured I'd use them and then I put these uh, hardware store bolts up in the front of it and then there's one down the back in the middle behind the coil pack that you cannot see and it's got a fresh valve cover gasket it looks like the old one was leaking so it was good to replace it anyway and of course the most important thing the reason I did all this the ECU, the way it's ran, this is way, way cleaner than it was before. I basically have these wires separate from everything because they're the ignition wires. I kept them separate just because I've been having so many issues with it, and I want them easy to access. And then I got this harness right here that my pointer finger's on. This one runs to all of the stuff up here on this side of the engine, temperature, uh, gauge, and uh, the O2 sensor and all of the stuff that's over here, the fan switch, and it runs up there. And then also the throttle position sensor and idle air control valve also run off of that one big bulky harness right there. And then this little one right here has the crank position sensor and the alternator stuff in it. And uh, this harness also has the stuff for my fuel injectors in it, as you can see right, right there. So everything is way neater. This thing that's kind of separate is the alternator wires, which, you know, loop up there. Just in case I decide to relocate it, I want a little bit more wire hanging out. This red wire that's kind of exposed is also the power lead for that. Just in case I decide to relocate it, I can get to it. And here it is right here as well. I have the relay and the ring terminal separate this time. Intake is put back on the catch can is put back on. I was able to run this line a little bit different. I think it looks a lot cleaner than it did before. I vacuumed the engine bay back out. I vacuumed the inside of the car back out. You guys already know about the harness being relocated. There's nothing running along my floor at all. And the main harness is right here for the mega squirt. Runs up through where the shifter cables are, which is also what it's zip tied to to hold it in place. And then back here, 
we've got mega squirt main harness the vacuum line for the map sensor and the db15 also, I tightened the alternator belt, did not mention that, but the alternator belt is tight. Kind of re-ran this wire right here a little bit. I unplugged everything and re-ran that so that it's up here because I was worried it would, without the lines, hard lines down here anymore, I was worried it would sink in, rub on a pulley or something down there. So it's up here against the valve cover. And these wires, like I said, they aren't tied up or cleaned up or anything because I'm going to go back to the newer style coil pack eventually but since this is the only coil pack I have left that probably still works I'm gonna leave that plugged in for now I'm probably gonna end up going to the junkyard very soon here and getting at least one more coil pack probably a couple of them I'm gonna get a new harness for a new plug so that I can uh, hook up the new style because this is the older style 1995 plug back on the car not the newer 96 plus that comes on literally everything else made 96 and up whereas I have to find something on only a 95 which really blows dick so uh, yeah I think that is everything uh, as far as what I did from the last update if I missed anything or you guys have any questions about anything please leave them in the comments I will get back with you guys later on and uh, I think what I'll do, this will be the end of the video, of course, when I come back to do the video of getting the Mega Squirt back and getting the car running again, I'll give everybody a quick refresh on everything that is done in here, and then we'll go plug the Mega Squirt in, get the car tuned again, get it on the road again, and have fun with it finally, and be able to drive the car, which will be nice. And the car will have heat, and be clean, and be able to charge, and uh... I won't have to worry about coolant freezing over and all this other good stuff. So, And I'll be able to put gas in the car, which needs done really, really badly, but has not been yet. That is going to be the end of this video, guys. Thank you all very much for watching, and make sure to come back for the next video where I get to put my Mega Squirt back in the car, and we get to take it for another drive with everything totally done.